Hello there, Chris here from Becker's Models. We're back with part two to paint the Y-Wing. And as you can see, I've sprayed it in a combination of red, brown, and black. Steiner is. I like using Steiner is for this because it gets into all those nooks and crannies and surfaces really, really well. And also it gives a, um, a warm undertone. Okay, so I'll be using that to its advantage when I put down the insignia white, dull white, starship white, whatever you want to call it, light grey even, uh, parts for uh, the top coats. Now before I go ahead though, I want to add, actually I might take that off, it'll be easy to look at the camera, I want to add some chipping effects to the front of these engine nacelles and maybe even to along the sides of the nose pieces. And the method I'm going to use is very simple, get a bit of sponge from a you know, doing the dishwashing or whatever, just zhush it up a bit to tear, tear chunks off, and a little bit of masking solution. This is just a, a latex-based uh, liquid masking uh, instead of doing hairspray chipping. I will be using, I might use hairspray chipping here and there for do different tones and different layers of the whites, uh, and also chipping back the uh, the main colours that I'm going to put down. I haven't decided what colour I'm going to do yet. So anyway, let's get stuck into this. So I'm just going to pour out a little bit of this. So I've pulled out some of this liquid latex stuff and you just want to dip it in a bit and just shush off some of the stuff onto a paper towel. And what I want to do is have sort of a, a random sort of... That might be a bit, a bit too much. I can always take that off afterwards. Let's see I'm getting some small-ish chips there. I'm not going to be afraid to overdo it with, a, with the Y-Wing because these were beat up to hell. Time to start painting, or underpainting as it's called. So the whole concept with this is I'm going to lay down some navy white and gold grey, but I'm going to use a stencil, particularly this little edge here, this corner, and put down a, a nice mottled layer of some really dirty whites. And I will hit some panels and raise features more so than others to break it up. And I might add one or two more bottles of, of white or maybe, maybe some Tamiya mixes. I don't know. I'm going to chuck it together and see what comes out the other end. So let's get cracking. So I've filled in the panel a little bit more. There's still a bit of brown showing in this particular one. You can leave that as pre-shading or some sort of post-shading effect if you want to. Uh, I'm just going to hit the edges there slightly. And so what I'll do is I'll come back in and I'll later I'll use the gold grey just to break that up. And I might put just on that panel that particular gold grey. Uh, I really enjoy this. It really zones me out. Uh, this is why I love the painting side. You can get so much fun trying to put these textures in. Some of you might think, oh, this is a bloody waste of time, Chris. What are you doing all this for? It's like, well, okay, fair enough. You can do a lot of this with oils if you're really happy with using just oils. But I like using my airbrush. It's something I want to keep getting better and better at as I get deeper into the hobby. I'm going in a different direction. As it so happens, I like to change my mind frequently. And what I've done is, well, I've decided not to go the, the salt chipping or even, even hairspray chipping for, for the base coat layer. I've been looking at the studio photos and also some other people's examples of Y-Wings and I'm really not seeing as much surface um, variation as I expected. I mean there's obviously lots of detail painting to do and you can go the copper route, rusted route, some dark grey panels and so forth but pretty much the whole thing was covered in um, yeah, in the reefer white. Now I'm going to try to replicate it. I'm just doing a little experiment here by adding some yellow to my clear doped linen that I used to start with and it's it's pretty stark to start with here I'm just hitting some of the major panels and so forth but I think I'm on the right trajectory uh, for that right tint so what I might do and I, you can see I've I've done the underside of the cockpit there that's with some yellow splotches and I'm starting to fill in these panels so what I'm going to do is I'll just show you the difference to this side the upper side so that's just the layers of clear doped linen and some whites uh, what I might do is do what I've done to the bottom, which is just to add in that diluted yellow and clear dope linen sort of mix. And then I'm going to dilute this even further, uh, take the yellow out and spray over it and just completely cover it and see what I come up with. And, uh, you know, this, like I said, this is all an experiment on the go. So let's go. So I think I've hit on a winner. 
I'm really liking the look of that. So the underside's done. What I've done there is I've oversprayed with a mix of almost white. So I've got some MRP white and some Insignia white. And I've just very, very carefully built up the layers until I've got, well to my eye at least, a dirty reefer white type uh, finish there. Still with a lot of the shading underneath, so that's going to give a lot of depth. If I just flip this over, you can tell the difference between... That's the top side, which has still got a fair bit of that yellow left in it. I'm just going to do a little bit more mottling, and then I'll do the same process, and that's cover the whole thing. So with the cockpit, hopefully the camera can get that, it's still a little bit, a little bit too stark, a little bit too yellow. If you put the two together, you can possibly see the difference, if my camera will actually work out what's white and what's not. Um, but that's okay because I'm going to be doing hairspray on that one to put the markings on and they have to be chipped back quite extensively so maybe it just needs to be that little bit more intense. So it's time to finish the base painting and do the top and then we can move to the next stage and that's to do, like I said, um, we have to put some of the colours on so the, the bands here around the nacelles have colours. I haven't chosen which ones I'll use. I'm thinking about going for a red squadron or I might even do blue squadron. Let's see what I come up with. So here I'm just filling in the, um, the blotches there and trying to get that nice dirty white sort of finish. I'm going to leave a little bit here and there because um, I want to do some chipping. But hopefully the camera can work out. It looks quite washed out on my viewfinder. But uh, So I've done the white at the top there and I'm just this is very thin as the compressor goes on. That'll do. So I've got the Y-Wing all masked up because I've worked out the um, uh, the model I'm going to do. I'm going to do the red jammer which had a red stripe underneath and over the top but also had this upper panel was in dark grey and only one of the cells it looked like what they made was they made this a replacement nacelle. This one has the red and the dark grey panel there. So what I've done is I've given it two coats of um, this really heavy chipping acrylic fluid and the one the thing I like about that is it it beads up quite strongly I'll just get a bit of masking tape off there get off um, because the chips on this have to be quite big that's the way if you look at the studio photos particularly on the canopy uh, they're, they're quite big so it's time to get some paint down and what I'm going to use is my normal Tamiya ones uh, oops not that one dark grey yellow red the yellow is actually going to I'm going to turn that into a pale gold by adding a little bit of the deck tan just to lighten and warm it up a bit a bit not make it straight yellow for those uh, goldy bits and then yeah we'll get onto it and do some chipping now normally I thin this with if I can get it just out of camera I haven't prepared <laughs> I normally thin this with X20A because this chips extremely well really quickly so let's just get stuck into it. So I put the dark grey down and it's already been chipped back I diluted it a little bit too much so now time for the red I've put a little bit of deck tan in here just to make it a little bit not so flat red it's coming out a little bit pinky red band around the uh, nacelle. All I need to do now is the gold and we're done. Time to chip these back. You can see that I've already started or finished really on these bands here. Oop, get it in camera Chris. <laughs> so I've chipped them back quite heavily. That's the beauty of the hairspray chipping. It comes off and in fact with this uh, particular brew that I use, the X20 thinned, sometimes you don't even need water to activate the hairspray. You just need the, the bristle brush or even sometimes just a Q-tip or cotton bud to get it going. So moving to the main body and I've got the canopy there as well. This is tightened up a little bit more. Um, for, so for example that dark grey that was actually just done with just swiping the brush like that and it just came off. So I've done the underside. There's some pretty realistic chips there. That's pretty pretty good. I might just do a little bit more and yes I just kissed that brush. 
Okay, look at that. See, it's just, if I just hit the, the bristles, it's coming off. And in fact, this is a good way. I had a lot of overspray underneath here. Um, all I had to do was, because I hairsprayed the whole, the whole thing was just, I can see there's a little bit of overspray in that corner there. I'll just see if I can scrub that off. May not be able to get it off. Just, I'll come back in with a, with the airbrush later on. But let's do the top. So, just going to damp the brush. And that should start to activate the hairspray. You can see that actually taking off the tape around the edges has given this nice sort of chipped edge already. So I'm just dragging the brush back. Try to get those panel lines, but there we go. We're starting to chip away. How far am I going to go? I don't know. I'm going to go pretty, pretty full on, I think. Particularly at the front there. There we go. Take off almost... It's got to get rid of this red paint that's leaching into the white. So that's going to take off most of the front there, like that. Okay, and we'll just continue around the side here. Sometimes I'll use an other... Oh, it's not clean, so I can't use it. Oh, oh, that's an old airbrush needle. I'll see if I can use this end here. But There we go, just scraping the around the panel lines. This stuff comes off really, really quickly, so that's why I can do this quickly on camera. Do those panel lines in there, like that. Sort of realistic. <laughs> uh, Star Wars, not realistic. It's not even science fiction, it's science fantasy. All right, I think that'll pretty much do it. That looks fairly gnarly enough. Might just do a few more scratches. So I've got the Y-Wing assembled and the tape's off and I'll put the canopy down and the guns are on. So it's pretty much there, but I've got a few more details to add. And what I want to do is just a bit more chipping with the sponge here. So I'm just using a bit of Life Color Burn Black using the sponge technique. Simply all I do is get a little bit of paint on this sponge, damp it off, just off screen there, and just damping that off. And then I want to hit the front of those nacelles. So I'll just... There's my elephant kids upstairs. There we go, just a little bit there. Need a bit more. So sponge tipping is a very... Um, oop, in camera, Chris, it's a very sort of brutal technique, but that's what you need for these front of these nacelles because they seem to get the most of the chips. So while I'm here, I'm going to do the front of the, uh, the nose. Just do a little bit down the edges too. So I'm barely touching that. If you've never used sponge chipping before, you've got to be very delicate. Don't just go nuts. There we go. I might just do a few more on this side here. So you can see where I've chipped away that dark grey panel. I should have done a matte coat over this. I haven't sealed this in yet, so I better do that soon. So I'm using a variety of life color, rust and burnt umber sort of colors just to paint these pipes. So I've done the underneath ones there. So that's looking pretty good. So it's time to flip her over and do these top ones and paint the droid. And I think that's all the painting I need to do. Then I can get into some oil based weathering and maybe a few washes. So uh, where shall we start with the top side one? Let's make a real bold one at the top here. I'm going off a few reference photos. Some of these are copper, some of these are rusted, some of these, in fact, there was one that was red. I might actually add a red pipe going in there, because why not? So there we go, let's have fun with this. Next stage is some panel line washes. I don't want to go overboard with them, um, because the contrast on this isn't that high on the studio photos. I've added a little bit of the light gray underneath there, and particularly on the nacelles. I'm just going to highlight them a little bit more with some of this dark grey. Hopefully it won't be too much, but um, yeah, I'm not going to do a traditional panel line wash in these panels. I'm actually going to use oils to do a bit of scorching and so forth. So just to add a little bit more. I'm waiting for that droid to, uh, <laughs> to dry a bit. I put a bit too much paint on him and then I'll touch him up some silver, but that's pretty much all the, all the detail painting done. So let's just see how we go with this. Let's do it on camera. Let's do it live. Can I actually open it one-handed without it spilling everywhere? Probably not. All right, so this stuff from memory. I haven't done, used the dark wash for a 
a long while. Now you might be able to see that there's a few other effects that I've put in here. So what I do is whenever I have a happy accident, like right here, you can tell, happy, happy accident, I go over the lines with my uh, freehand painting of these uh, pipes. I just dilute it with a bit of water and um, yeah, just sort of spread it on elsewhere. If you look at some of the, that panel line wash hasn't been um, properly fizzed up. So just let me give it a shake. It's all settled down at the bottom. Um, so yeah, if you look at some of the ILM or I forget the guys who did it, the original, um, you know, guys, some of the, some of the weathering effects they use, are, they actually look like happy accidents. Like you can tell I've done so, sort of replicated it here. See a bit of yellow here, overspray there and a bit of yellow on the back there. I've just done what they did when they sprayed this yellowy gold here that is shushed on a little bit more here or there just to break it up. So, you know, I'm not trying to go for a studio completely accurate one, but I'm trying to emulate what they did. So, um, yeah, so this wash, you have a look at these, this side in here, if I hit that, that's going to really pop on the dark. And yeah, there you go, see? So I'll, I'll do this just some places, not everywhere, where I just want to sort of highlight some darker areas. Where we do it on top? Let's have a think. I might put it in that grill in this wheel that's masquerading as something. If you have a look at the parts here, that's some landing gear. What else we got back here? Oh, here's a, here's a jack off a tiger tank. All right, so I'm just gonna hit some of these parts just to get some extra shadows. You see that in there? That's all, I'm not gonna use a black uh, because it'll be too much, but I'll just do this sort of thing and just sort of blend it in. Just finding all these little parts just to, just to make them pop a little bit. Um, so I'll just go over the whole model and do that and then I'll come back and then I'll seal it in with a matte coat because then I want to do some final oil work. I'm applying a filter next. You might be able to see a difference between this nacelle and this other one and you'll definitely see it when I turn this over uh, where I've applied a filter underneath. So I was the, the Starship white or whatever you want to call it, the reefer white, I, I felt that I've it's still a little bit too stark. So what I've done is I've applied uh, one of these old MIG filters that I had. It's brown for white, white green, uh, and it's basically a very diluted wash. And so if you see, using a, a flat brush, I'm just applying it very lightly across all these surfaces, and you get a really nice dirty, dirtying up uh, underneath here. So. Yeah, it's just, and if, and if it pearls too much in one area, like just here, I'll just use a cotton bud just to get rid of it. But on the flat surfaces there, and it's a little bit too thick, I'm getting some paint marks. I'll just quickly clean that up with some enamel thinner. But I'm, it's just, the filter, all it does, if you're not familiar with filters, it's a very, very thin, uh, basically a wash. It's only about 1% paint. The rest is enamel thinner. And that's soaking into the matte coat there just to change the tone, the color temperature or... Uh, the tint, I guess you could say, of the underlying paint, and you use this just to just to unify everything, and it's just hitting these these white, two white areas, and we're getting a really nice dirty effect there. Okay, and you can see how different it is to this this nacelle, which I haven't touched, and that one, and I haven't done the the top either. So I'm going to apply that all over, and you can see how dirty that nacelle is there. So it dries pretty quickly uh, compared to the clean one. So I'm going to do that all over. So the final thing to do is to add some soot or scorched effects. I'm using a, a diluted brand, a blend of the MRP Super Matte Black in the exhaust suit. Soot. Uh, I'm using my PS770 with the Mac valve turned down quite low. And I've already started to add some effects you might be able to see there on the cannon there. And a few on the pipes. And uh, I've just got a, just on that radiator vent there as well. So what I want to be doing is putting down very small... Um, located sort of I'm looking at the, my reference photos of my big computer monitor to my right over there so particularly on the front here I've got to be really careful to slowly build them up so you see it's just very slowly building up and what I'll try to do over here is try to do a, a sort of a, a bolt that's hit. So we're getting those sort of effects. So on the white, it's going to look even... more 
not stuck. So the trick is just to lay down a little bit and keep going. That's the beauty of the MacVal and the very thin MRP. I've actually diluted that with a bit of thinner. So as is my want, I will do this, try to do this off camera. We'll do a little bit more on camera. If you look at some of the reference photos, there's quite a bit of, that's too much, quite a bit of staining. Depends on what particular X-wing or Y-wing, sorry, you want to do. So I'm just going to add a little bit of staining there. And you may prefer to do this using pastels or... Look at that, I just found a little hair from the hairbrush, but I like, really like the... Using the airbrush to get these effects. And I'm sort of feathering and fanning that out. Like that. And of course one of the areas to do is on the exhausts. If I put it in camera that might help. Okay, so I'm just laying down a very thin exhaust. I did a little bit here. You can see it's a bit mottled or a bit speckly. I did that with the... Uh, oh, I'm stuck. My finger's stuck in the wire wing. Um, I did that with some of the pre-shading, I think. So, let's go over the whole thing and add some effects. And then I think that will pretty much wrap up. Right.